to say that we are followers of Christ and we're not passionate about Christ, then what will we say? But Lord, we want to be part of you. You said that those that do not take part will not be part of you. Amen. Lord, let us have our inheritance in you. Amen. Lord, Lord, the words that we've spoken today, let them come from your heavenly throne. Amen. Let them keep us on this pathway of righteousness. Amen. Once again, we'll commit everything into your hands. Hallowed be thy name, O Lord. And thank you very much for thank all you. your blessings. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus. Now, without further ado, we're going into the fifth day of the Good Friday, which is the significance of the death of Jesus Christ. What is good about the Good Friday? This is Celeste Church of Christ, Amazing Grace Parish, London. A city of difference, a church without walls, where the shepherd in charge is Assistant Venerable Superior of Andrews, Prophet John Martins. Our guest speaker today will be Superior Evangelist Ola Merrill from Arthur Streets, who is also part of us here at Amazing Grace Parish, London. And without further ado, I hand over <coughs> the stage to you, sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, welcome everybody to the um, is it platform or to Zoom, Zoom meeting or the petition, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here and I've been enjoying myself uh, since the beginning of this program. Uh, this is what I enjoy to do. Uh, the Word of God has been part of me for many, many years, for more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been, <laughs> Uh, whether we believe it or not, I've been uh, teaching and preaching for about 30 something years. I can, and the last, the last time, the first time I preached was about 35 years ago, and I still have the uh, teaching in my archive. Uh, everywhere I speak, I have them recorded, I have them written down, so I don't uh, throw my um, sermon or my speech away because they are my assets. And I believe it's going to be benefit for us as well when. Uh, we had the opportunity to teach or have an opportunity to speak, especially in the words of God. Uh, we're supposed to keep them for official references. Um, as I've said on Monday, this is the, the um, most important week in the life of Christians. Every Christian are supposed to observe this week. It's, it's a week that is so passionate to us. It's a week that I, I value so much because it has added value to my life, and I believe it adds values to all Christians as well. Because uh, when you call yourself a Christian, you are supposed to be a follower of Christ and not a fan of Christ. You are supposed to be sold out to the things of God. When you are sold out to the things of God, it affects your emotions, it affects your feelings, and it moves you from being a negative or being uh, an antichrist to be lover of Christ. When you become a lover of Christ, you do things and your life becomes uh, very, very productive. Because when you read the Bible, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, precisely, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. But I have come so that uh, you may have life and to have it to the fullness. That is a great promise to all Christians. And unless we work with him, unless we believe him, unless we trust him, uh, it becomes very difficult for that promises to come to pass. And this week especially is a week that we have to nurture, it's a week that we have to hold dear to our, uh, our life. And I'll be given uh, this topic, uh, I believe is the significance of preservation of death. Which one? Mm, the significance of the death of Jesus. Yeah, Christ. right. Mm. 
but we can't, we, I can't talk about the death of Christ without talking about why he came to life in the first place. Uh, before you can die, you must have come to life, isn't it? You mm-hmm. must have lived with man or live with your family before one goes, even though this is one day. So I must, I have to talk about why he came. Uh, the father today is very, very significant because they call it Good Friday. And when we were the t- shepherd or teaching, I said, it wasn't so good for Jesus Christ, but it is good for us uh, because he died for our sin. Uh, he was not a sinner, but he became a sinner. He, he, we look at him as a sinner so that we become uh, righteous to him. We cause righteousness to Christ. So that's why it was called good for us. It's good for us because he took away all our infirmities, took away all our bodies. So it is good for us in the sense that from now on, I, I believe from this particular time, day, minute, hour, we are supposed to have given our life to Christ Jesus. We are supposed to dwell in his ways. That we are supposed to love what he loves. We are supposed to hate what he hates so that when we walk with him, then he can walk with us. And every time I speak, I talk about the principles. And one of the principles is what I've just quoted, John chapter 10, verse 10. And when we walk in that, uh, it gladdens our heart. So why did he come in the first place? I think we discussed about that uh, when we were uh, talking and one of them is to do the will of the father. Um, my responsibility as a man is to do the will of my earthly father, but as a Christian, my responsibility is to deal with the, uh, to do the will of my heavenly father because it comes before my father. And that is found in John chapter six, uh, in verse uh, 38. For I have come down from heaven, yeah. not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Thank you very much. So when we were talking about uh, crucifixion, uh, that he was killed, they were planning to kill, that was one of the reasons why they conspired against him. Uh, because he was trying to do or perform it's, it's, it was not even he was trying to do. He did the, yeah, <laughs> he was not trying to do. He did it. He, he performed the responsibility that his father has bestowed on his lap. Uh, to us, it becomes very difficult for us to be able to perform the responsibility of father. But it's not, it's not difficult. It is more difficult to, to worship a herbalist, to worship other gods, than it's easier to be a Christian. It's very, very easy to be a Christian. It's an easy religion, but unfortunately, we have moved away from the principles. Uh, every time I talk, you must be very, you, by now you know what that, the principles of God, because the very first time I come here, I make, a, I spoke about 30 minutes regarding the principles of God before I, I go into my sermon. So by now, a member of Egypt is supposed to know what principles. Yes, I, I agree with that. So. So it's important to our life that, that we should allow that principle to be to guide our steps. Um, I have experience of both ways, whether it's in the darkness and light, and I believe that to walk in the dark is very serious. It's a serious matter. So the second thing that he came to do was to save sinners. I think we discussed this when we were talking. That's his primary aim, to come to save the sinner. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. And I believe Hebrews chapter 9, 26 as well. First Timothy says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners for whom I am a chief. We are sinners. He came. So the Good Friday is called Good Friday because he came to save us. If he has not died, we'll say the second part, if he has not died, there will not be any Christian at all, no Christianity at all. So that's his purpose. He came to save us. The first one is to do with the will of the Father. The second one is to save sinners. Uh, and, and the third one, I love this so much. Um, I was speaking to some kids, uh, I think October uh, 2020. I was called to come and speak to them and they make mention of this because when uh, I, Every time I teach, occasionally I, I like to be interactive. So I decided to show, but this could not be interactive. So I have the opportunity to ask them so many, uh, so many questions. So the third one was to bright, uh, to bring light to a dark uh, world. We, no man can do that. It's only God that can. So that was why the pilots were so furious. 
that we are trying to protect its darkness. We want to, people to live in bondage. We want to continue to enslave people. So where has this man come to get them to set them free? So they were so angry. But that is the principles. That is why Jesus Christ has come to save us, to bring light to the dark world. And we thank God for Celestial of Christ. The Bible, the, we were called Celestial Church of Christ, a, a house of holiness, a house of light, not a house of darkness. Until mm -hmm. we see Celestial Church of Christ as a house of light and not a house of uh, darkness, we will continue to abuse the principles behind formation of Celestial Church of Christ. Are you with me? Yeah. So yeah. Jesus Christ has come <laughs> to bring light to the dark world. Maybe we have missed the way. We, we have gone astray. We are supposed to do the right thing. We are doing the wrong thing. I think that's what your, your mother was talking there. They said they know the right thing, but they don't do the right thing. We have done the wrong thing. So for God to put us back to his line, we must align to him. Are you still here? Yes. Because the word of God is so powerful, it's so interesting that I can't move away from it. Uh, it has become very difficult for me to move away from the words of God. I take your advice, but I will wait according to the words of God. If it does not meet the quality, the accepted um, uh, point that I'm looking for, I don't take the advice. We are supposed to be in that category. We are supposed to be in that stage because that is what Jesus Christ wants us to enjoy. You see, he wants to enjoy us and we want to enjoy Jesus Christ. But for you and I to enjoy him, we must walk with him in the light. And to, made, <laughs> to be made like his people, I love it because he came, uh, he left his glory in heaven, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. he, he come down to our level. Hallelujah. hallelujah. When, am I right to say hallelujah? Yes. Is it hallelujah this one? All right, thank you very so much. Yeah, right. When we are bold enough and courageous enough to walk with him, he normally sits on his throne. Uh, he doesn't come down. He sent the angels, Jesus Christ, spirit to speak to us. But he himself will come down like he did in the Garden of Eden. He walks with us. He asks us questions. Uh, he, 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 it happened to me in 2017. That changed the way I live. That changed the way I, I interact with people. That changes the way I preach to world. That, that decides everything about my life. He walks with you. He talks to you as if he's talking to a friend. He asks you questions. Even if you have problems, when you have it, it gives you the ability to have a divine connection to him, with him. When you have the, 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 the opportunity to have a divine connection with God, you find out that everything about you changes. That is his primary aim for, for us as his children, to be made like his people. He wants to work with us in the same level. He doesn't want to, you know, when you study the life history of King David, it's very interesting. King David, when he comes to God, he doesn't come to God as a king. He comes mm -hmm. as an ordinary man. He comes down very, very low. He will not introduce, this is King David before you. Mm -mm. He comes as just David. That is why God says, I have seen or I've gotten a man of my own heart. In other words, what God wants to do is the same thing that is in the heart of David. If God is preparing to destroy a land, that is exactly what is in the heart of King David. If God is prepared to go and bless a country, that is the same thing that is in the heart of David. So God comes down to the heart of David because the actions and the attributes of David was in conjunction with the words of God. So the next one, to be able to, I have about 31, but I will not be able to um, see all this so that we can finish the topic, isn't it? <laughs> so maybe about 10 or and then I move to the other ones. So maybe next we shall sure talk about the rest. Um, to be to be a witness to the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth in stress, isn't it? Mm. And the Bible says he's bearing witness to himself. It means it's confirming what he has come to do. Are you here with me? Yes. Um I don't know your name. What's your name, sir? Jesus. Yeah. So, for example, uh, evangelist goes out and is talking, and they were asking, "What's your name, Deji?" So, to reply, yes, I am really Deji. My name is Deji. He's confirming who he is. Mm -hmm. So, likewise, Jesus Christ is the truth, 
And the Bible says he's bearing witness to the truth. So he's confirming the reason why he's being called the truth and why he's defending the truth. And then as evangelists, well, let me uh, tell us today, and um, modern or whether what the mothers are Christ and every attentive people, our responsibility is to be the custodians of the Bible or the good news. Mm -hmm. When you are a custodian, in other words, you are supposed to be the one that teaches, the one that protects the word, the word that defends the word. And if you cannot do that, then it becomes uh, very difficult. Sir. <laughs> I don't want to go too far away from the topic, but I've given some uh, examples just to back my point. So to bear witness to the truth, that's one of the reasons I came. Number six, to destroy the devil and his works. We can find that one in Hebrews, I believe, chapter 2, verse 14, and 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. When you want me to stop, let Since me know. Therefore, yeah. the children share in flesh and blood. So Hebrews, Hebrews 2, chapter 2, verse 14. 14. In as much yes, then, as the, the one. children have partaken of, of flesh, flesh and, and blood, blood, yes. He himself likewise shared in the same, that mm. through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That, that is, is the, the devil. devil. That is the reason why he, he came uh, to life. And the Bible says he has given us authority to do it likewise. Mm -hmm. uh, but because we have violated his principles, we have moved away from him because we have decided not to do his will. Uh, instead of us to, uh, to work with God, to praise God, to abide by, by his commands, we tend to do that which man wants us to do. And because of that, we continuously enslave ourselves. Uh, a lot of people in the church today, they have enslaved themselves because they fear man more than, more than fear God. I, I, I respect man. You have heard me saying this more than time, 20 times every time I come here. It, it has become very uh, difficult for me. It's like a poison to, to honor or to reference man and then reference God. If I can bow down to God, I can't bow down to man, sir. Because I'll be contradicting myself. I love the shepherd. I love his work. I respect him. But he's a man. He's my shepherd. That regard, that honor is there. But he's not God. Because no man can be God. And I'm not God too. I cannot be God. Because there's nothing God can do. That I, can, I can't create. Uh, I'm a creator. He created me. So and one of the things that makes me to be angry, sir, is that when people make Satan the opposite of God. Mm. No, 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 no. Mm. The devil is not the opposite of God. The mm. devil is not a creator. Mm. He was created. Mm. So unless you have another creator that you can say God has opposite. So Satan is not an opposite of God. Mm. He has not been created to come and create or to come and not sure to come and teach. He's in another realm entirely. So if anybody comes before you and tell you that Satan is supposed to of God, tell the person to tell you where it is in the uh, Bible. Because if it's not in the Bible, uh, I don't, uh, by now you guys must know that. <laughs> so that, that's, my, that's, my, that's my principle. And I'm following the principle of the shepherd too. So because for you to be able to go to that level that you are going to, um, I keep as writing my, my children that if I was talking to evangelist, um, uh, maybe when he was taking me home, I said, for you to be the best in your profession, you must work with the best. Mm -hmm. That best you are working with must be in the profession that you are in. Mm -hmm. If I want to be a carpenter, I must work with the best carpenter to be the best carpenter. Mm -hmm. Um, if I want to be the best carpenter, I won't. I will not work with a, 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 what we call it. But I will not work with a barber or, or carpenter that doesn't know nothing. That means everything that I've learned about that profession is useless. I want to work. I want to be the best lawyer, and I'm working with a musician. How is that going to work? I want to be the best uh, uh, keyboard player. I have to work with the young boy in the choir, isn't it? That is how life it is. You see the ministry of Jesus Christ. There was one situation 
I won't waste much of our time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yes. when I, mm -hmm. I get excited. Now, before that day, there was a preparation. Jesus Christ and his disciples, they want to go to a, a city uh, because to heal, to bless. And when they woke up the following morning, the spirit spoke to Jesus Christ. As they were going, they turned back. And Peter, you know, Peter is a troublemaker. I said, ah, my master, we are supposed to go to therefore market. Why are we going to Liverpool? He said, because of their unbelief. In other words, they are not in line with God. It's not that God cannot change them, but at that particular time, it's not going to work. So that's why I keep saying to us, if you want to be the best, <laughs> you have to work with the best and the best in your profession. Hallelujah. 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 So the, he came also to give us one of the best gifts, eternal life. Without him, we can't live. I had the shepherd saying every time that it's not him, it's God. Today, you find it very difficult for a, a, a shepherd or a pastor, a Jew, to make that statement. What they tell us is that it's by their power. Mm. And I look at them as <laughs> ignorance, isn't it? <laughs> I call it ignorance. So he's here to give us eternal life. According to John chapter 6, I believe, um, if my yes, is, is correct, I think 51, I, I believe so. Um, I, uh, I am the living bread. Yes, sir. I came down from heaven. Yes. If anyone eats of this bread, yes. he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Thank you very much. We remember that in Genesis, after Genesis is when Adam was created, the Bible says he bred a bread life in him because before he became a my living soul. So he's just all kinds of scorn for everyone that has lost to bring us back to himself. Hallelujah. So that we can have a good life. So that we can live a good life. And uh, you are opportune to be in relationship with Christ. I keep saying it. Um, if I tell you that relationship with Christ is the best, I'm not missing my words. Um, I've been a Pentecostal, I've been a junior pastor, I've been a team leader, I've been a circle leader, whatever you call it. I have led the choir, I've led the team of Salmon, everything you want to talk. I have lived with them. Some, some big, big, great pastors. Even as young as when I was 20 something years old. So if I tell you this church is the best, I'm not missing my words. And when I am in their midst, sometimes they are surprised. Are you sure you are serious relationship? Yes, I'm serious relationship. So, but the problem is in any society, in any association, we have the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> that, that is life. There's nothing we can do about mm -hmm. it. In the house of God, definitely the devil will have their own agents. Mm -hmm. There will be people, their only primary aim or objectives in the church is to enslave people. Mm -hmm. uh, we find that so much in the church today, but it's up to you if you want to be enslaved. Mm -hmm. For you not to be enslaved, you have to believe in Jesus Christ that he has given you everything free. Mm -hmm. Now grace has prepared everything for mankind, mm -hmm. especially those of us that are followers of Christ. Whether you want to have a husband, you want to have wife, you want to have good life, you want to have good health, the grace of God has prepared this from the foundation. Mm -hmm. The only thing you and I need is just a little faith mm -hmm. to tap it because it's the faith that serves as a key mm -hmm. that will open the door for us to take what you want to take. But if you don't believe that He has come for your life, then it becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. That is why I told us that. Christianity is a very, very easy religion. Very, very easy. Mm -hmm. as, long as, as soon as we walk according to his ways, according to his commandment, and do what exactly he asks us to do, um, I believe everything will be well with us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I say hallelujah last time, you said that it's all right for me to say hallelujah. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. I will. Yeah. All right. Just to fast forward, this one is good too, but like uh, to bring great joy. Mm. Bring great joy. I, I wish I have time, but uh, but there's no time, <laughs> so I'll just be calling on 
say to us. So in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible makes us to understand that uh, the reason why he came was to bring great joy yeah. to us. Then the angel said to them, yeah. do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. The Bible says to all people. Mm. The fact that the Bible says to all people doesn't mean for everyone, everyone mm. <laughs> those that walk according to the commands and the principles of God. I mm. see, um, <laughs> I was called a few weeks ago uh, by, by, I think, uh, five choir masters. They said they want to see me that term. Um, I'll be speaking against them. Uh, but you are part of us. Why is it that <laughs> you keep uh, hammering us? Um, I said, I don't hate you. Uh, but once people moved away from the principles of God, uh, the way it hurts me, the way I get angry, I cannot explain. But because as a chorister, there's a guy like, see, until we understand two things. Two things that makes God so angry is pride and people violating his patterns of operation. The patterns of operation means the way we worship, God has good given us patterns. Mm. The way we sing in his premises, God has given us patterns. The way that we dance, especially in the hands of God, there are patterns that God has described in the Bible. And when you violate that, it makes him angry. He moves away that. Then <clears throat> anything about spirit of God moves away from that premises. And the other one is pride. Now, when you read the book of Amos chapter number five, <laughs> so I was telling them, I'm, saying, I'm not against you guys, but unfortunately, the songs that you forgot to sing in the party yesterday, uh, when you come to the church, you want to sing it. Uh, the dancing you want to dance in the party yesterday, because you have no time to dance it, you come to the premises, uh, you come and dance there. Uh, you are telling me that God will bless you. Also. So we, I gave Bible to all of them, and I asked them to open Amos chapter number five. In the last two verses in Amos, you find that, and I told them that the Israelites, they have the best choir in the whole world. Mm. And when they sing, they sing like uh, the <laughs> big, ma massive choir, you know. Amos uh, chapter five. Let's see verse uh, from verse twenty-one. You see, God what says, "I hate, uh -huh. I despise your feasts, yeah, and I take no delight in your solemn assembly." Yes, even though you offer me your burnt offerings, yeah, and grain offerings, yeah, I will not accept them, and the peace offerings of your fattened animals, mm. I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs mm -hmm. to the melody of your heart. I will not listen, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Thank you so very much. That, that, that was the um, passage I read then. God told the Israelites, you have been doing well before, but because you have moved away from the patterns that are formed or created for you, everything you are doing from now on no, doesn't make any sense to me. Your singing, your dancing, your whatever. I'm not interested in it. That was not the reason why Jesus came. Jesus Christ has given us uh, mm -hmm. the patterns, are given us the principles we are supposed to follow. I'm not saying that we shouldn't dance in the presence of God. I'm not saying we shouldn't uh, sing. The way I play my own music is far, far different. Um, you will not find me play all those kind of things they play today. Um, my music is, is uh, totally spiritual. My singing is totally spiritual. Um, so that's the way I live, and that's the way I want to live. And I'm working with the shepherd because he understands my ministry. He stands by my ministry. He supports my ministry. If you are not supporting my ministry, I can't work with you. That's how I operate. Because I want to grow, if you are, if you, if you are, it's a shepherd, he wants to put me at the, in the end of the city. That's what I expect people like him to do. And if you are a shepherd, if you are my boss, you cannot do that. I cannot work with you because I want to grow and I want to learn more. That's how we're supposed to live in the presence of God, especially in this church. We are supposed to be a follower, not a fan. A fan has nothing to gain. Mm. If you are a fan of footballer, uh, Becca doesn't know me. Does he know me? No. Uh, uh, Chris Uber, what the, he doesn't mean I'll be jumping up and down. Some people, they have stroke because of this, you know. 
No, I don't want to leave that. We don't want to leave in that uh, uh, pattern as well. God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. And I will, talk, I will talk about two more things why he came, because a lot of things that I've told you about have about 41 or 45 points on my um, thing. But I'll talk about two, and then I'll move to the next. Um, because I want to ask us a question as well. Now, Jesus Christ came uh, to demonstrate um, humility, um, how we should be humble, or how we should humble ourselves. And I find out that in the body of Christ today, there's no humility. Uh, and when you study your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you find out that all the servants of God, genuine one, the first thing that God looks for is humility. Without humility, God cannot speak to you or work with you. Uh, a few years ago, about five, six, before the COVID-19, I was asked to come and speak in a workers' conference. This is a, it's not a celebration of Christ. Uh, it's Caribou and Seraph who joined with you know, a lot of them. And the question they asked me was, this is what I was talking about. How, what do you think are the characteristics of the servants of God? The first thing I addressed was humility. Mm -hmm. Without that, it becomes difficult for, because Jesus Christ himself is humble man. He is very, very humble. Mm -hmm. So he expects us to copy him. We have to be an imitator of Christ when we talk about love, when we talk about humility, when we talk about character. I was talking with Shepard here, I think before we start the program, when I said the, the, the men, they were created in the image of God, but the women they were created in the character of God. That is why you see some character in the life of women that you can't find in the life of men. Mm -hmm. You find the characters of God in the, in the life of our women, our mother. You find that they are, they, they are compassionate, they are, they are passionate about things, they care about things, they support they, from the bottom of their head, they do things. But for me, before I can do it, you have to knock my head, knock my back, knock everywhere before I can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Humility is, is one of the, is the, top, is, is the top grade. It's, it, when we are when we graded all these uh, the, the attributes mm -hmm. and the characters you find a Christian, humility takes the number one position mm -hmm. because it is humility that we build that we will build uh, uh, our peace that we give back to peace that we give back to joy that we give back to character that we give back to attitudes that we give back to relationship and that we lead us to the destination that we are hoping to get to. Without humility, it destroys with good humility, it destroys our character. And once our characters is destroyed, it destroys our belief systems. And once that is contaminated, it becomes very difficult to function well in the body of Christ. So we must nurture humility so much in our life. Let's see what the Bible says. Uh, Philippians chapter number two, verse five through to eight. Have this mind among yourselves, yes, which is yours in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who though he was in the form of God, yes. did not count equally with God, yes, a thing to be God, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death. On a cross. Yes. Before I go on, thank you very much, sir. Yes. I have this 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 question. Um, I need to throw trust. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what are the consequences of us the Christian if Christ had not risen or had not died? What will be the consequences for us if Christ? There won't be Christian. There won't yeah. be Christian. Uh, and it, as soon as death, Jesus didn't die, then it would still be in sin. There would be no redemption. Yeah. Good, good. I like it. I like it. Would there be any preaching at all if Christ has yeah. not come to us? The flesh would not become the one. Yeah. And, and another thing God's judgment. <laughs> Will be you, you do, you die. Mm. Instant. No mercy. So, if, if, if that is the case, that if he has not come or if he has not died or risen, 
all these benefits will not have uh, at us. So why, if we know all this, why then are people moving away from Christ mm -hmm. to crisis or to other religion that are not beneficial to us? They must have a reason, isn't it? Yeah. But that reason, I don't know. Laziness. Maybe. <laughs> Laziness. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Laziness in, in studying the word or worshiping God or pride, pride. impatience, short, short. Yeah, I believe we want a quick way to work our um, problem, isn't it? Quick, quick way to dance. Yes, quick, 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 quick. This. As I went into time, they tell us so that we can land up because I have so many things to um, share. Now I give us five things regarding the consequences if Christ had not, before I go to the last uh, bit, has not risen from the dead. Number one, uh, there will be no um, uh, productive uh, preaching. And as Mommy has said, uh, even though if we want to preach, we will not be preaching about Christ. So because he has not gone, so what do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. We can find out the first Corinthians chapter number 15, uh, regarding today, uh, verse 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith also is empty. Mm -hmm. So if Christ has not come, uh, if he has not died and risen, nothing, accomplished nothing. Our faith is empty, our belief is empty, no relationship. Secondly, no faith, isn't it? Yes. There can never be any faith. Um, that is from the first Corinthians. Actually, first Corinthians chapter 15 and Romans chapter 9, 8, 9, 10 talks about all this. Um, in first Corinthians chapter 14, the same thing, in 14b and 17, and your faith, the Bible says empty, and verse 17 says, and if Christ is not risen, <laughs> the Bible says your faith is futile. You are still, he said that uh, your, your our sins. Uh, we still live, you still live in our sins. Yeah. And there's another one um, I, I came across when I was coming uh, on true witness. In other words, we, there's no ability for us to, to witness that we come after the reason and death of God. In other words, if Christ has not come, what do we want to witness in the first place? <clears throat> Nothing. We will still be in our yesterday's old ways. Because that is what First Corinthians chapter 15 and 15 told us. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, 15 says, yes, is a confirmation. And we are found false witnesses of God, isn't it? Yes, we are found to be misrepresented. Uh -huh. God yes. Because we testify about God that he raised Christ, Christ, yes. Whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. Actually, and he said the same thing as well uh, on forgiving sins. Mm -hmm. Who is going to forgive our mm -hmm. sin if he has not come? Mm -hmm. save souls as well, I believe. Who is going to save our soul? The Habalists can't do that. Man can't do that. It's only Christ that can do that. And also, I find this very interesting. That's one of one of my boys told me. He said that, Daddy, when if Christ has not come, if uh, he has not died and rose, uh, that means all of us will be unhappy. <laughs> And I begin to think about this. The same thing when you go to First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. Uh, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of men the most pitiable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say, okay, that is true. Because God brings joy, brings mm -hmm. harmony, brings yeah, peace. Yeah. So if there's no Jesus Christ, that means we remain unhappy. But unfortunately today, we believe that we can uh, get our happiness from other gods. Mm. But uh, the thing, if they ask us one thing, uh, by the time they give us that one thing, we pay them seven ways. All right, so uh, uh, to, to round up, I'll give, you two, I'll give us two points. Yeah, then if we have time, then we'll come back to the last bit of the, um, um, the program. Uh, when my brother was talking, uh, Last time, we talked about 
this to bring judgment. Jesus Christ has come to bring, that's one of the reasons he came uh, to bring judgment to the people. And if you look at the life history of those, what happened, the lesson that we are reading today uh, regarding Pilate and Herod, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I told us that uh, majority of people on earth then, they knew the ministry of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The fact that they knew some of them, they perished because they refused to walk according to what Jesus Christ has laid down. And some people, they were blessed because they understand Jesus Christ and they walk according to the ministry of God. So whether we like it or not, uh, in the hands of God, the fact, let me use a chauffeur, for example, Nabahi came, Sele came through him. They know his um, reason, they know the tennis, they know everything, but still, some of them were caused because they violate the principle of the establishment of the relationship of Christ. And some people are blessed because they work according to the principles that are godly there. That's how we're supposed to see things. If I want to remain blessed, if I want to remain happy, I want to work with God, we must choose to work uh, consciously according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that throughout this passion, that God in his infinite mercy we we'll do a net treat in our lives. Amen. So by the grace of God, when we come back, we look at the significance uh, of today, uh, significance of tomorrow, and significance of Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Amen.